Why do we need to come is not our ultimate destiny. Countries like the United States, China, and India, along with countless corporations globally, are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. It's evident that we're poised at the brink of a monumental leap into the cosmos. This journey into space isn't just a lofty ambition. It has already yielded tangible benefits for humanity on Earth, yet our sights must be set higher. Many overlook the moon, a celestial body that graces our night sky, in discussions of space exploration. It's perceived merely as a lifeless stone circling our planet. But the moon is far from mundane. It boasts a landscape filled with mountain ranges, expansive valleys, and a horizon that offers a view of Earth presenting a reciprocal sight to our own views of the lunar surface from our backyards. The tragedy lies in how vastly underappreciated the moon is. While some consider it merely a brief layover on the journey to Mars, this mindset severely undermines our progress in space exploration. The moon is not just a stepping stone or a mere refueling station. It is a place where we can build homes, establish cities, and lay the groundwork for humanity's broader expansion into the universe. If we truly aspire to a future among the stars, our first step lies not in looking beyond the moon, but in recognizing and harnessing its potential. The moon is an integral part of our journey into the wider cosmos, a launch pad from which humanity can leap towards the stars. This video makes a compelling case for the colonization of the moon, exploring why we should undertake this monumental task, how it will benefit humanity, and how the unfolding new space race will irrevocably change our future. But one message resonates unmistakably. We must return to the moon, and we cannot afford to delay. As I stand at the foot of the ladder, touching the lunar surface, it's clear that the moon holds a unique place in the cosmos. It's the only celestial body, apart from Earth, where humans have walked. The lunar landings remain one of the greatest feats in human history, a pinnacle of innovation and courage akin to the Industrial Revolution. The United States set a bold goal within a mere decade to send humans to the moon, and we achieved it, marking the crowning achievement of the 20th of the century. This wasn't just America's victory, it was a triumph celebrated worldwide. Yet, since those glory days, we have not returned. The reasons are complex. The Apollo program was primarily a race against the USSR to the moon. Once this objective was achieved, interest waned. Both the U.S. government and the American public saw little reason to continue lunar missions. We didn't lose the technology or capability to reach the moon. We lost our ambition. This represents a profound failure of vision, one of the most significant in modern times and perhaps throughout history. The imperative now is to reignite. Let's make the journey back, not just for exploration, but for the survival and thriving of humanity in the vast, uncharted universe. It's been over half a century since we last visited the moon, not due to any technological limitations, but simply because we haven't put forth the effort. Neil Armstrong, one of only a handful of people whose insights on lunar exploration carry unparalleled weight, once expressed confidence that we would establish scientific bases on the moon within his lifetime. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2012, and his expectation remains unfulfilled. This stands as a stark reminder of our failure to honor the legacy of the first person to walk on the moon. The truth is, there is nothing, technologically or logistically, holding us back from constructing a moon base today. Every challenge has either been resolved or is in the process of being tackled. The real barrier is our diminished ambition. For 50 years, no human has ventured beyond low Earth orbit. During the 1960s, people marveled as astronauts walked on another world, and yet somehow, that incredible achievement was deemed sufficient. During the Apollo missions, the entire world watched in awe. That collective inspiration, however, has waned, and with it, the drive to return. We now face a critical decision point. Do we continue to neglect this potential, or do we rekindle the daring spirit that once propelled us beyond our earthly confines? The establishment of a lunar base would serve not just as a scientific outpost, 
but as a beacon of human ingenuity and a stepping stone for deeper space exploration. It's time to look again to the moon, not as a mere milestone from our past, but as a corner. A new Cold War is brewing with Russia and China, ongoing conflicts persist in places like Ukraine and the Israel-Palestine region, and deep political divisions are evident. Oppressed groups are once again raising their voices, demanding change. Yet despite these parallels, there's a stark difference in how we respond to challenges. The Apollo era was defined by its audacious spirit and willingness to dream big, despite the pressing issues of the day. It's time to rediscover that spirit. Just as the moon missions provided technological advances and a unifying purpose then, returning to the moon could spark innovations and offer new perspectives that contribute to solving today's global issues. The drive to colonize the moon is not just about extending our physical reach, it's about expanding our capabilities and addressing Earth's challenges from a new vantage point. The opportunity to harness the moon's potential is more than a scientific endeavor. It's a chance to inspire and unify humanity in a time of division and uncertainty. Let's embrace this challenge with the same fervor as our predecessors and make space exploration a beacon of hope and progress once again. Many believe that the United States has lost its superpower status and that we are headed toward collapse. This sentiment was also prevalent in the 1960s, yet in the face of immense challenges, including the looming threat of nuclear war, America made the audacious decision to go to the moon. We chose to look beyond our terrestrial crises and strive for a higher goal, proving that when united, humanity could achieve the extraordinary, landing on the surface of another world. It's been 50 years since Apollo 17, the last crewed moon mission. We haven't returned, not because of technological limitations or unresolved problems. We've already mastered the journey through the Van Allen belts, and we've harnessed the power of one of the most formidable non-nuclear engines ever built for this very purpose. The simple truth is, we haven't been back to the moon because we haven't tried. Gene Cernan, one of the last humans to walk on the moon, expressed this sentiment poignantly during his final moonwalk. He highlighted the global interest in the Apollo missions, noting that young people from around the world, including those touring the United States, were inspired by these celestial feats. This inspiration reached across national boundaries, igniting a shared sense of possibility and wonder. Today, we must rediscover that same spirit of determination and adventure. The challenges we face on Earth are significant, but history has shown that pursuing ambitious goals beyond our planet can bring out the best in us, fostering cooperation and innovation. The moon once again offers us a canvas for the next chapter of human achievement, where we can test our limits and expand our horizons. Let's choose to go back, not just to revisit old ground, but to build on it, to inspire a new generation, and to rekindle a global unity through the shared pursuit of exploration. The time is now to reignite our collective ambition and step forward into the future, returning to the moon as a stepping stone to the broader cosmos. During the launch of Apollo 17, Gene Cernan hoped that young people visiting from around the world would be inspired by what they saw and learned during their stay in the United States. He emphasized the broader significance of the Apollo program, which he believed opened up a global challenge, the challenge of the future. This opportunity isn't just for America. It extends to young people everywhere, fostering a spirit of cooperation and unity. Cernan's message was clear. The path to the future, though only just beginning to open, rests in the hands of the global youth. Their ability to learn to live and work together represents the real key to overcoming the challenges we face. As we look expenditure of hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars. However, the case for returning to the moon is built on more pragmatic grounds. It's not about fulfilling the whimsical dreams of billionaires or projecting a distant future. It's about tangible benefits that can enhance life on Earth today. Establishing a moon base is a practical ambition, achievable in the near term and potentially profitable. Supporting a lunar outpost transcends political divisions, offering clear advantages to everyone on Earth. 
The moon can serve as a vital resource hub, potentially unlocking new technologies and materials that could revolutionize industries ranging from manufacturing to energy. Moreover, establishing a sustainable presence on the moon will provide invaluable lessons for future endeavors on more distant worlds, possibly mitigating overpopulation and resource depletion challenges back home. In short, a moon base is in the best interest of all Earth citizens. It's a step towards securing a more sustainable future, not just in terms of space exploration, but also in enhancing the economic and environmental health of our planet. By investing in lunar exploration, we're not turning our backs on Earth's problems. Instead, we're seeking innovative solutions and expanding our capabilities to tackle them more effectively. Rocket launches today, even with cutting-edge technologies like Starship or Falcon 9, are immensely expensive, primarily due to Earth's high gravity and dense atmosphere. Rockets must be aerodynamic, which significantly limits their payload capacity, and they require enormous power to overcome the gravitational pull of an entire planet. Now, consider the moon. It doesn't have these issues. To understand why, let's discuss delta V, which, simply put, is the amount of speed required to reach a certain object or orbit. From Earth, reaching low Earth orbit requires speeds of 9.4 kilometers per second. That's why our rockets are massive, most of their bulk is just fuel needed to accelerate payloads to speeds more than 10 times faster than a bullet. In contrast, launching from the moon requires only 5.6 km s of delta phi to reach low Earth orbit. This dramatic reduction in necessary speed and energy underscores a pivotal advantage. Launching from the moon makes everything simpler and more efficient. Rockets can carry larger payloads because they don't need to be as massive or fuel-heavy as their Earth-launched counterparts. This fact alone positions the Moon to become the industrial capital of the solar system. The ease of reaching orbit from the Moon, compared to Earth, means that the same rocket could carry more cargo and require less fuel. This efficiency not only makes space travel more cost-effective, but also opens up unprecedented opportunities for space exploration and industry. Imagine the Moon as a launching pad for missions deeper into space. Its lower gravity well makes it an ideal staging ground for constructing and launching the interplanetary missions of the future. By establishing a base on the Moon, we can leverage its unique advantages to propel our capabilities in space exploration, making it not just feasible, but economically viable to reach farther into our solar system. This isn't just about going back to the moon, it's about setting the stage for the next leaps in human achievement. Launching rockets from the moon isn't just feasible, it's a strategic necessity for the future of space exploration. It's faster, cheaper, and more efficient than launching from Earth. This isn't merely about visiting Mars or mining asteroids. These ambitions rely fundamentally on the Moon's unique advantages. The Moon allows us to construct and launch the kind of massive, powerful rockets that are impossible to build under Earth's heavy gravity and thick atmosphere. Without utilizing the Moon, humanity's most ambitious space projects, including extensive space colonization, might never get off the ground. But why does this matter? Why should we focus on the Moon, Mars, or asteroids when Earth itself is fraught with challenges? The answer lies in the potential economic and environmental benefits. Material sourced from the Moon could be sent back to Earth with relative ease. While it may not be as straightforward as terrestrial mining, lunar materials do not degrade over time, making the duration of their transport less of a concern. By developing lunar mining, we can potentially reduce Earth-based mining activities that significantly damage our environment. Imagine a future where we tap into the Moon's vast resources, easing the burden on Earth's ecosystems. The economic model here is not just theoretical, it could be the foundation for a new, sustainable economy that spans from Earth to the Moon and beyond. Engaging in lunar mining and building infrastructure on the Moon could create a ripple effect generating technological advancements that benefit Earth directly. 
Every step we take on the moon paves the way for smarter, more efficient use of resources in space, which in turn can help us manage Earth's resources more responsibly. Thus, focusing on lunar development isn't turning our backs on Earth. It's about protecting and enhancing our home planet's future while reaching out into the cosmos. Colonizing the moon offers more than just a gateway to the rest of the solar system. It presents viable solutions to Earth's environmental challenges, particularly in combating climate change. One of the most promising of these solutions is space-based solar power. In space, solar power achieves peak efficiency since there's no atmospheric interference to diminish the sunlight's power. This could revolutionize how we generate energy. The concept of launching gigantic solar panels from the moon isn't just a dream. It could soon be an economic reality. While NASA has explored the concept of space-based solar power, the prohibitive cost of launching from Earth was a major barrier. The moon. Welcome to Blasovia Science TV, where we take you on an exhilarating journey through the cosmos and unravel the mysteries of science. We are excited to offer you the opportunity to become a valued member of our ever-growing community of cosmic enthusiasts and knowledge seekers. Exclusive access to cosmic content. As a member of Blasovia Science TV, you will gain exclusive access to a treasure trove of cosmic content, including documentaries, interviews with leading scientists, space missions updates, and awe-inspiring visualizations of the universe. Live Q&A sessions with experts. Your membership will grant you the chance to participate in live Q&A sessions with renowned scientists, astronomers, and space explorers. Get your burning questions answered by those who push the boundaries of human knowledge. Embark on a journey that spans the cosmos and join us in unraveling the secrets of the universe. Become a Blasovia Science TV member today and together we will reach for the stars. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget to leave your comments.